pretty. Hey, hey, garden gals and guides, it's Steph with Tiny's Garden Gardening in Zone 5B slash 6A in the Chicago suburbs. Hello and welcome to a lot of new people here. Thank you for subscribing and watching my channel. Just a little background info, I am a home gardener, hobby gardener, love cut flowers, and so I just do this because it simply brings me joy and it also brings me joy to bring my garden to all of you as well. And lastly, I'm a mom to two newborn identical twin girls and a four-year-old boy. Let's jump right into the video. So today my mother-in-law has stopped by to help watch the twins and she requested a bouquet. Well, of course I can make you a bouquet. So what I would like to do is highlight this underrated cut flower that I really don't hear very much about that I'm going to fill her bouquet with because it smells incredible. This is sweet black cherry dianthus and it is a gorgeous cut flower. Not only because it has an aroma that is heavenly, but also because the flower itself is strikingly pretty, at least I think. It's got a velvet-like texture, and even when you look at the petals, you can see that it has that rich texture type of look. And then it also just has a beautiful color, a deep red, quite magical in a bouquet. And even if you look closely at the stamens, they're almost like a violet stamen, and then it's got a little white on it as well. So I think it's a fabulous cut flower, but you really don't hear much about it. Again, this is called Sweet Black Cherry Dianthus. Common name is Sweet William. It did come back for me last year in my cut garden bed in the back, and last year we were considered zone B. This year we're considered zone A. Now it doesn't come back in my raised beds all the time, but we'll see what happens next year because this is the first time I've planted a row of it along here. But I'm here to tell you, I think this is a great flower to add to your cut flower garden, especially if you're a beginner because it's easy. I grew it from soil blocks and it's grown wonderfully for me. It is branching, so when you cut it, more come off of it. I wouldn't say it's as cut and come back as a snapdragon, for instance, but you still get quite a few stems off of one bloom. So if you have a small amount of space, it's a good flower to put in there and still get a decent yield from. Now, when I say it has a beautiful aroma, I would put it up there with sweet peas and also with, what's something else that I love? Stock. We're talking really strong scent and not in a bad way by any means. I would say it's a little more similar to a sweet pea, kind of that old fashioned smell, clove-like smell, but also not overpowering, which is nice as well. Now she wants something that she can smell in the morning, put by her bedside table. So something like this is perfect because when you wake up, you get just a little whiff of that, but it's not overpowering and it's a nice, scent. Also, stem length is good. Check this out. Not bad at all. This is actually the best stem length that I've had on these, even better than in years past for me. So I'm really especially happy with this this year. Now I do know there are some other colors of Dianthus. I'll plead my ignorance on those because I haven't grown them. I've only grown this one. They might have a smell, they might not. I'm really not sure. That's a good Google question. Oh, it's so good, it's so good. Not too much, not too little, just right. Now I know some people don't like red in their garden. Like some people are pretty against red in the garden. I'm the opposite. I love red in the garden. Whether it's cutting garden or landscape, of course not too much in the landscape because you don't want it to overpower everything. But oh, I just think this color is so magnetic. Now, if you're one of those people who doesn't like red in your garden, that's okay. I'm not judging you, but I do urge you to try at least one cut flower that has a nice strong presence and see how you like it in your garden and in your bouquets. Now, as far as harvesting, I just picked this one here on the left. And if you look at it, you can see that it is more tired. <laughs> I don't want to say it's on its way out, but it's kind of on its way out, especially on the side here. You can see those old petals versus this one here. 
they're pretty much all open. So I probably could have cut this even a few days ago, but they're not looking dead or wilted. So I would use these and this I'm going to just put in a little bud base in my house because this is not going to last as long as this. Now, another thing I really like about this flower is its shape. It's more like a circle or a sphere shape, which is unusual in the garden. You don't really have a lot of cut flowers with that type of shape. So that gives your bouquet something too. It's not a spike. It's not like your typical flower with petals and around. It's actually spherical. Now, as far as colors, there's not too many colors I wouldn't put with it. I especially love yellow with it. This is Costa Apricot Snapdragon. That looks really nice. That Triloba Rudbeckia behind me, I'm gonna try and put that with it. And then there's only one color I see out here I don't love with it. I mean, don't get me wrong, I could totally make it work. You know me, I love to put all the colors together, but it just is a little too much, I think. Now, it clearly matches my boots, which I love, and this is my new favorite Benary's Giant Xenia. This is Benary's Giant Coral Xenia, and she really is amazing. How funny is that? Clearly, I love this color. Just don't love it with this. However, Triloba Rudbeckia, I have to remember to look on this side. Using my phone, it's a new thing. Bear with me. Triloba Rudbeckia with the yellow and these black centers. Oh my gosh, so good. Let's put it in there. This is the first year I've grown Triloba Rudbeckia and I'm really enjoying it. It gets very tall, like you saw behind me. Lots of branches, so there's a lot to work with. I can use this as a filler flower, even though I honestly don't use filler flowers very much because I just love jam-packed bouquets. Classic over stuffer, guilty. But look how dainty these are. That's gonna complement that so nicely. But as I was saying, because it's got so many branches, I can really cut in a lot of different places here and have a lot of different heights to work with in the bouquet. And there's so much length on them, makes them really versatile as well. I'm gonna split this. Here's how we're looking. Now I know it looks a little too tall right now, but what I'm gonna do is add some of those snapdragons, which also do have a scent. They're actually my husband's favorite cut flower. They have a very pleasant scent too. I'm going to add some of these especially yellow ones, which I said are the Costa Apricot, beautiful, beautiful. And that'll give me a spike element and also some height because those have really long stems. So it'll balance out the proportions. Oh my gosh! Why does that always happen to me? Everything's fine, everything's fine. Oh, thank God my vase didn't break. I love this vase. From Anthropology on sale, by the way. Let's get back on track. There is a way that you can call for stock with your seedlings. I will put that in the description below because Johnny's has a really good guide about growing stock, starting it from seed and then trying to actually just grow the doubles if you prefer. So I'll put that in the description below. Let's add some of this in there because this light pink actually works well. There's enough of a contrast, and I am not a pink girl, but this will be nice with all of this. Okay, now we need some bigger flowers to fill in. So now I'm gonna dive into my Flora Originals. I'm thinking a blush color will play really nicely off of this dark, deep red and this stock here. So let's go pick some. I apologize because I don't have the exact name of these. These are Florid Originals. I think it's either Alpenglow or Precious Metals, her zinnias, but they are very pretty. Just a slight blush, and this one's a little more colored. I would call that a, a pink, but look at the size of this one. That is the size of my palm for sure. So these will go really nicely in that bouquet. Okay, here's how we're looking. You can see I just added some of those zinnias in this back here that was looking sparse and starting to fill up. I also did a little more Triloba Rudbeckia for some movement. And now we're getting closer. And I put that beautiful big one right there. So now we're gonna go to the back. I'm gonna get some more zinnias, zinnias just to fill in what is left. I love coming around the corner 
and seeing this view. I love coming to the back this time of year. It's so magical and full. So I just picked some Sahara Rudbeckia and this does not have a smell. No smell at all, not even close, but the coloring is so amazing. You get so many different shades within one plant. Some are more orange, some are more yellow, some are burgundy and yellow. Some are, oh my gosh, stop. The most beautiful shade of red. I, I just think it's a great cut flower. And again, easy to grow. I grow these from soil blocks. I've grown them in cell trays, easy all the way around. Look at this patch. And a lot of them are way past their prime. I need to come in and cut, cut, cut. But look at this one down at the bottom here. Isn't that so unique? Here's a better look at all the colors. And I have to show you, because I have one in my hand. I mean, I have never seen these on my Sahara Rudbeckia. Look at the striations of the different shades of burgundy in that pale yellow petal. The size of my palm. Oh, ho, 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 so good. We are coming along so nicely, loving what the Sahara Rudbeckia, Sahara, Sahara Rudbeckia, is bringing to this bouquet. It just complements that sweet black cherry dianthus so well. And the one I just showed you, I think is going to finish this bouquet. If you see right in here, I feel like there's a little space. Let's bring her into the party. I'm not satisfied. I feel like I need just a little, just a little something right in there. She's coming along so beautifully though, isn't she? Oh, I love it. So let's go into my very huge and floriferous flora zinnias. I've got unicorn mix down here. I have precious metals in the middle, I believe. Then I have golden hour. And then on the back here, Dong Creek blush. Picked one from Dong Creek Blush, which is a very nice, almost cream color. Again, a bigger one, size of my palm. And then one from Golden Hour, which has a beautiful, slightly lavender pink on the outside of its yellow petals. Okay, I really hope these fit. Did I break it? Yep, I broke it. Yes, that works for me. That works. Let's give it a spin. I'm quite pleased with that, my friends. Oh, nope, 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 nope. I need something here. One more here, one more here. Such an overstuffer, but I just, I just can't help myself. So this I believe is precious metals. Oh my gosh, I'm just noticing this on the petals. That's so pretty, let me show you. So this I believe is precious metals. And if you look closely at the tip, there's a little indent on each petal, almost like a scallop. That's so pretty. It's the little things for me. Comment below, can you see what I'm saying? There's just like a little tip in the middle on each one. Oh, I just love flowers. Okay, baby, you are a beauty. And the yellow complementing that Triloba rudbeckia. Are we finished? Are we there? By golly, I think so. Okay, my friends, I think we are done. I am here for it. You can still see the sweet black cherry dianthus. Remember to put that on your list if you like a very good aromatic smelling flower. Add that in, also easy to grow. And it pairs well with so many things. I would also say put Sahara Rudbeckia on your list if you have it. And look, I mean, it's kind of wild because we've got all of this coming at us with the Triloba Rudbeckia. And then this side is a little more conservative, a little more reserved, but it's got a lot of personality. And here's what I'm waiting for. The smell, my friends. You get scent around the whole bouquet. And that's what I wanted. I'm loving it. Comment below, what do you think of the bouquet? Also, if you've grown sweet black cherry dianthus before, let me know your feelings about it. Share with the rest of us. Again, 
Thank you for being here. I'm glad to have you as a part of my journey on this channel and subscribe if you haven't yet to follow along with all things garden. I'm gonna go give this to my mother-in-law now. Hopefully she loves it as well. We will see you in the next one, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, remember to hit the like button. It really helps my channel. Thank you for your support. Bye. Happy planting. P.S. For those of you who didn't see the lavender lysianthus, here she is. Oh my gosh. And here she is again. What? If you haven't seen my short where I made a bouquet from my backyard with this and the unicorn zinnias and a couple other things, go watch it. It's great. You should definitely put lavender on your list.